I was having a conversation the other day and you know, it, 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 I, I've always thought highly of this Dallas Cowboy community. You know, what we do uh, in terms of quality takes, quality content creation. We're like a machine for real Cowboy fans to come and get information, you know. Um, there's just some things that the four-letter network won't tell you or that three-letter network won't tell you or that dot-com won't really give you. So I think a lot of people come to this YouTube thing, this thing of ours, you know what I'm saying? They come here for nuanced opinions that people really believe in because what they get on television is they get a bunch of contrived arguments. Um, they get a bunch of, you know, we're going to put you here and you there and y'all going to make this point and y'all going to have a good little fussing match. I threw my pen, a good little shouting match on television is going to be good for ratings, right? We don't necessarily do that here. And I know a lot of people are new to this because there's this new way where people are getting sick of, you know, the fakeness, the contrived nature of what happens on the television. And they're coming here. I had a comment the other day. Yo, Vach, I was watching ESPN. I was sick of what they were saying. And I came to YouTube and found your videos. You know what I'm saying? I'm, it's dope. Salute to you. And I think there's a lot of people like that that come to us for the first time or they, they, they come to this YouTube thing for the first time and they're refreshed by how real our takes are or how much information that we, that we, that we put forward or, or how knowledgeable we are. You know what I mean? So with that being said, what I want to do is I want to talk about this cowboy community, this thing of ours. I want to talk about this thing as a whole. Um, you know, some YouTube channels that you should probably go check out. What's so good about them? And I might have a story. Let's talk about it. Everybody that we talk about today, the link's going to be in the description to go to their channel. So go check out their content. If I talk about them, you like the story or the description that I gave you. Really go click all their asses, really, in real life. Click everybody because everybody got something interesting and different that they uh, that they bring to the table. And that's what's so special about us. We don't all sound the same. And we all bring thoughts and opinions to our channel. We do a lot more than that, but everybody has a thought and opinion. And it's all qualified, right? We may not all agree because I disagree with a lot of people, but that's normal, right? But every opinion comes from a real place, a real situation, a real thought process, you know. Um, and I know I, I talk about my opinions like it's ironclad the right thing. But that's just because I speak with a lot of, you know, confidence and vigor because I'm loud and from Mississippi. I may not be right, but I feel like I am, you know. So when I say these things, you know, it may come off a certain kind of way. But everybody that's ever said something in cowboy land believe in what they saying. Tyson West Coast, shouts out to him and Boss Cowboy. I wanted to say them first, cause really they Facebook guys, right? But I'ma still shout them out though. Uh, cause they do have a YouTube presence. You know, they I think they got their own YouTube channels and they kind of do uh show up on different channels, whether it be me or others or whatnot. Um but check them out on Facebook because that's where they big markets at. They really put the satin on the panties over there. Um, I, I first heard of Tyson West Coast. First of all, when me and Tyson talk, Tyson don't like to let me talk. You know what I mean? Tyson believe in what he's saying so much. He's so passionate about what he's saying. He barely let me talk. I got to muscle my way into a Tyson conversation. But I think that's, you know, there's some endearment to that, you know. But I first discovered him. He's Tyson West Coast, West Coast Cowboys from the West Coast. So I first heard of him. It was doing training camp news, right? He's one of those news guys uh, to, to, to where, you know, he was in Oxnard because he, he lives out there. So he gave you that first that first look at it or whatever. And I think he 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 brings a good dynamic to his channel. Him and him and Boss Cowboy do a lot of work together. Just met Boss Cowboy, had him on my channel uh, a couple months ago. And he 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 has some pretty good insight as well. So y'all please check them out. And if you get into a, uh, if you get into a shouting match, with Tyson just you know be first interesting thing about Mark Holmes is like there's the Mark Holmes you first meet then there's the Mark Holmes you know once you get to know him a little bit and please stay tuned because I got a story to tell that's connected with another YouTuber about Mark Holmes so y'all hang tight and be around for that story but what I think Mark Holmes is is really good at is that he builds community over there you know, now, if I disagree with anybody the most in cowboy land, I've looked at some of Mark Holmes takes and, and I, 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 I just shrug my shoulders. I shrug my shoulders sometimes. But this is what Mark Holmes is really, really good at. 
Like, I think every community needs a, a, a builder in the community. And I ain't talking about his hardware stuff, right? But in terms of building the actual community itself. Um, Mark Holmes is the only one of us, right, that'll put out a PSA and say, hey, man, I got about 100 pounds of wings. And I'm going to feed 500 people in this parking lot. I'm not feeding 500 damn people. But I'll feed 500 people in this parking lot. Show up and let's have a good time. Nobody else is doing that. Um, when the draft was in Dallas or whatever, Mark Holmes fed three whole people, th three, three whole days, three whole people. For three days in a row, he just fed strangers, right? You come through, you watch the draft on this big projector or whatever. He invited Vosh to come through and give draft insight or whatever. And, and it was a good ass time. He's had strange people in his house. I'm not having strange people in my house to tear my shit up, but he's had strange people in his house, right? Just to, I've been in his house. Me and other cowboy YouTubers have been in his house just to do shows. I've drunk his liquor. I've sat in his seat. I've ate his food. Mark, good people, man. Um, during the draft, he had like this big Zoom conference call with like 300 people. Uh, Dak had Dak, uh, had this... Uh, this cancer, uh, you know, foundation awareness thing that he was doing. And Mark Holmes made a shirt. I forgot the name of the shirt, man. But y'all go to his channel and like check it out or whatever. But he made a shirt. And he got a bunch of people in the DMV to sign the shirt. He's like, hey, y'all meet me here and sign this shirt for Dak Prescott. He mailed that joint to Dallas. People in Texas met there to sign the shirt. I signed it, met some cowboy fans, shots out to y'all. Sent it off to the West Coast, they signed the shirt, they sent it back to the DMV, so now you got signatures from all over the country on this shirt, and he gave it to Dak Prescott, and it was a dope moment on, on, on camera or whatnot. That's fire. That's fire in terms of community building. You know what I'm saying? And I salute Mark Holmes for that. Check his channel out. I'm gonna put these next three in a bunch because I discovered them all at the same time. Uh, my Cowboys family, uh, Cowboy Fan 1980 and Space Cowboy, right? Um, so first of all, shouts out to my Cowboys family because they bring like another little dynamic to, they, to their Cowboy news and information. First of all, they post every day. I, that should be that should be clapped upon in itself. Um, and I tell the story all the time, like when Zeke was suspended and he was coming back, they was the first one. I don't know what kind of Illuminati uh, circles that they in that gave them the information that soon, but they came out and they gave me all, they gave everybody all the Zeke news early. And then like an hour later, Bleach Report, Highline Bling, giving all the Zeke news. So they were definitely first on that. Um, and they really do the my cowboy family thing. They kids got cowboy takes, and that's interesting. So if you if you want just an extra cowboy take, uh, uh, please check them out. And I think they married now. I think they've officially gotten married. They're not doing a fiance thing no more. So like, just <laughs> shots out to them. Cowboy fan, nineteen eighty, right? The one thing I always say is when we when we get into different. Um, different you know like different things happen like in cowboy land right and sometimes cowboy the cowboys can do something frustrating and i always say i'm gonna keep my cool i'm not gonna give an angry rant flipping furniture um you know that's not me but a lot of people come to channels looking for that they want to they're angry so they're looking for a youtuber to be just as angry as them he is one of those furniture flipping scream cuss you out cowboy fans right but it came from pure football passion so i get it as a former player former coach i understand pure football passion and that's where he gets you know that energy from like he'll flat out call his d-line soft if they if they playing soft you know what i mean and i find it quite entertaining because he does it from a real place it's not like okay i'm gonna put together this rant i'm gonna scream and flip that table it's not choreographed like he really feels pissed off about it so there's a genuine anger when he's talking about things that piss him off plus he has other uh other good good takes on on different cowboy news and things like that so check him out but out of that bunch the uh the one that i that i that i kind of talk to the most that i kind of interact with the most is space cowboy um and he just hit five thousand subs so check him out my man cardo he this is what drew me to him right he was in a circle of angry cowboy fans like I've been. And he was surrounded with, uh, you know, with with super angry emotion from those cowboy fans like I have been. But he somehow found the logic in what was going on, just like I've been. Right. And I and I really took this liking to him because he likes to he thinks things out before he says it. You know, not that everybody else doesn't. 
But it's just that I relate to him in the way we think. We think very similarly, right? And another thing about Space Cowboy that I really like about him, he attacks it versus, uh, he, he, he attacks the situation logically, but he also brings a different angle that I haven't thought of. And it always keeps me on my toes. Um, about a month or so ago, we were talking about Jamal Adams, right? We were talking, okay, would you trade a first and a third round pick for Jamal Adams? I told him Space Cowboy, he was like, yeah, man, first and a third, that's a lot. And I tell you what, you don't want to mess up that comp pick formula neither. And I say, you mother, you, I never even thought about that angle of it. You know, the, the whole comp pick formula. It's not the first time he's done it. He's done it multiple times where I thought I had the angle all figured out. Um, but just him keeping me on my toes, he'll have another angle, just another little side that I haven't thought about. And it made me walk back some things that I say, think about that angle, and then present my full-blown opinion on that. Um, he's, he's, he's good with numbers and salary cap analysis and things like that, man. Check his channel out. He's growing. Um, and and I, I stand by him, man. Go check him out, too. So when I first got into this YouTube game... Um, you know, one of the first people that I met in a cowboy YouTube fan circle or whatever was Joe Rod from Cowboys Block. Um, he is really good on his channel. Check him out. He's really good at putting topics together, formulating topics and, and talking points and conversation. Right. And it's like when, when you're listening to him talk, he's not like talking to himself. It's like he's talking to his audience. And I think with his nuanced questioning, I think he's built a good little following over there. Like he'll be like top five Cowboys that could have got cut last year, but probably going to make the team this year. You know what I'm saying? It's a real interesting topic like that. And I'm terrible at coming up with 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 topics. Right. So I can understand what it's like to make a good topic, right? Plus, he's, he, he, he doesn't just cover cowboy news like we all cover cowboy news to an extent, but he'll get deeper into cowboy things that are going on. Like, hey, the cowboy's talking to these people at the East West Shrine game. You should look at them. You know what I'm saying? Just things like that. So I'll take that list that Joe gave me, those top five people, then I'll go watch film on my own and come up with my own opinions. You see what I mean? Uh, Joe Joe likes to be ahead of the curve like that, and he got a good little a good little community over there. Uh, hat mode, this is serious, and all that. So check out Joe Rod. I love it when somebody can just find a niche. Like it may have been something that was missing in the world, missing in the community, and they they use it to the best of their abilities, and they make something great out of it, right? The late night hype. With Big Game James, Skywalker Steel, Law Nation, right? What is so on time? It's so appropriate and it's right what this community needed. It was just what, it was missing a little bit. It was something that was just missing in this community, right? And I think that, that, that it just fills a good little space there, right? Because what they do, first of all, the, 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 the name is fantastic, but you know, just having different people from cowboy land come in to just talk, right? And honestly, I don't look at them as interviews. They are, but I don't look at them as interviews. I just think they're cowboy people coming to chill and talk to Big Game James Skywalk Steel and Law Nation. You know what I mean? And yeah, they come together and ask questions, but it's something special about how they ask questions. I'm not great at asking questions. I know how hard it is to ask questions. I know people ask questions all the time and they think it's easy to ask questions, but interview somebody and come up with some good damn questions for 30 minutes. It's difficult. It's flat out difficult, but they have such an ease and a flow and a smoothness about them. And the, and the, and the three personalities come together and they, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't butt heads or whatever. They, they, they got a nice little groove about them. You know what I mean? And I'm going to touch on this later. I'm going to touch on this later. But I think this cowboy community was already legit with what we had. You'll add another YouTuber and it'll grow. It'll add another YouTuber. It'll grow. I think with this show, which is composed of three YouTubers, I think with this show, it boosts the credibility, the, the credibility of the community even more. Right. And if the community has even more credibility, it grows. Right. So, for example, somebody can come to my show and be like, oh, I've never heard a YouTuber talk sports before. But Vot, you have a really good nuanced opinion. Let me go find some other YouTubers. Then they grow from what I did. If um, they're interviewing um, George Iloka 
And George I. Loka says, boy, Chris Richard did this terribly. It's one thing if I say it because I'm a fan saying it, right? But if they have an interview and the former safety is telling y'all what Chris Richard does wrong and that gets on the Dallas Cowboys radio station, that gets picked up by Cowboy beat writers, it gets retweeted, it gets 100,000 views on Twitter, then that boosts our credibility as a whole. So now more people are coming to YouTube to watch YouTubers. You see what I mean? They're doing a great thing for this thing as a whole because of the, the, the credibility of it. People always come to me and I partially hate this. I'm grateful that they say this because they mean well by it. They mean well by it. But people are like, yo, Vach, uh, man, boy, I hope you get picked up by some radio show. Or why aren't you working for ESPN right now? And I don't necessarily appreciate that. I appreciate the compliment, but I don't appreciate it because this is our thing. This is my radio show or my talk show. That is their radio show. That is, you know, Mark Holmes' thing is his own thing. You see what I mean? If we take what we did and put it somewhere else, it's no longer our thing. And it might be terrible now. It might be terrible now. For example, Dan Arlovsky, right? Former Lions quarterback or whatever. He was a fantastic personality before he got hired to the big network. He had great information, great talking points, great perspective, but he went to the damn networks and they made him change who he was. And now that he changed who he is, he just corny now. He's corny now. And it seems like everything is so fake and contrived about him when we like the real shit a little more. And that's why people leaving the networks and looking for YouTubers. What the late night hype has done with Big Game, James Scott Walk Steel, Law Nation, what the late night hype has done is that they've created this real situation where you can come in and be real with real information. I said inf situation, inf okay, cool. With real information, real situation, with real people, and you get the real side of the people that they're talking to. George I. Loke and I saying this shit on TV. It's PR, it's PR people that have a fit. But the fact that he said it here, you see what I'm saying? And the fact that the crew was able to get that information out of them, it's good for them. It's good for the greater community. It's good for information because somewhere there's a Christmas Shard fan just screaming, hey man, y'all wrong for firing Christmas Shard. Now we have additional information on why Christmas Shard probably should have got fired. So, uh, boy, shots out to the late night hype, man. Skywalker Steel, in which I've told him, not this face, but on the internet streets in his face or whatever. I told him he's got some fantastic production. If I can just give him his flowers, he's inspired me to upgrade my damn production or whatever. So as I'm doing my channel rollout or whatever, expect my damn production to go up because I'm like, damn dog. Like, you know, it's like, it's like setting a bar almost, you know what I mean? So shots out to him, me and big game James, even though we argue and we fussed and we screamed and we we haven't wrestled yet, but knowing me and me and me and his relationship is on the way. Um for him to just kind of be putting things together on that side, man, I'm giving him props uh for that as well. And um with that being said, I'm gonna segue into next YouTuber, Law Nation. Um big shouts to Law Nation, man. He's um he's one of the guys that you know, like Shango was first. And shouts out to Shango too, because you know I'm gonna touch on Shango in a minute. But, but one of the first you know examples of cowboy YouTube people or whatever is Law Nation, because I wasn't always cowboy guy. I was draft dude, and all I did was draft, 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 draft. And I was getting a lot of love from Browns fans, Jaguars fans, and all this. And I was like, damn, I kind of want to just be amongst my own people. I want to do work for my own, you know for my community. You know what I'm saying? This, this, this means a lot to me. This, this, this thing of ours, man. So I wasn't YouTube guy at the time. I was just draft guy. And Law Nation was watching my little shitty ass live stream with 13 people watching or whatever. But he noticed that I had great information and he, he reached out to me. He was in my comment section. He was like, yo man, keep, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, great information. Learned a lot. Whatever you said. I was like, all right, cool, whoever you are, Law Nation, whatever, <laughs> whoever you are. Um, then months later, right, when I when I kind of decide to, decided to make my leap into cowboy land, Law Nation was the first one to kind of 
put me in a room full of people that I needed to be in. That's another thing I'm gonna always give Law Nation his flowers for. And I've told him to his face over the phone. In many capacities, I've, I've, I've told Law Nation, one of the realest people I know, because every opportunity Law has ever had, He's tapped Vach on the shoulder at some point and be like, hey, Vach, I'm doing this. Or he's tapped that person on the shoulder and said, hey, man, I, I know this dude named, named Vach Lombardi. He's fantastic. He's, he's great at what he does. Let's have a conversation about him. I will always give Law Nation credit for that. And here's a story for you. Um, I remember, um, so when I was first getting into my YouTube bag or whatever, Law was putting together this big uh, group talk live stream thing, right? It was me and a bunch of other uh, cowboy YouTubers. I don't even remember. I just know me, Law, Joe, and like three other people was there or something. It was just talking cowboys, right? And nobody has, has, has heard me talk cowboys at the time. Now, I have a lot of skins on the wall in, in, in cowboy land now in terms of my debating and how I get busy and me you know, how I bring my, you know, thoughts and information or whatever. But I wasn't that guy back then. Like I was just, I was just Vash Lombardi, but I wasn't Vash Lombardi then. I was just Vash Lombardi. You know what I'm saying? So he, 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 he kind of put me in that room and he had his topics, you know, law was real big at like, in like moderating at the time. So one day, um, Mark Holmes shows up in that chat box. Right. And like I said, there's a difference between Mark when you first meet him and Mark, once you get to know him, two different people, he wants to really test your information and really find out who you are. Um, so Mark Holmes kind of like, you know, we was, we was like disagreeing about, uh, it was about a handful of plays that happened in like one game or something. And, and his side of it, well, well, coaching was terrible, Vach. And this was like 2017 or something. It was like coaching was, was, was terrible on that, on that one play, Vach. You wrong about that. I was like, well, I feel you, but you know, Jason Witten missed the block and Cole Beasley ran his route at the wrong depth. So that's what happened to the play. It wasn't coaching in particular on that one play, um, that, you know, that we kind of messed up on, right? And Mark Holmes kind of got got loud and buck with me. And I, I I ain't no bitch, so I mean, what you know, what do you want to you, know, you want to talk about this, Mark Holmes? So he invited me on to his channel to have a debate with him. And you know, Mark is real. Uh, you know, he he's real grand. He's all about the presentation. Let's make a thing out of this. Let's make an event. So it was gonna be you know the young buck versus old man, right? That was that's what he used to call. It. I was twenty four at the time, so. What Mark Holmes did was he said, all right, cool. We're going to set a time and a date. Me and you going to debate. Law Nation is going to moderate it. And I didn't back down from Mark Holmes at all. And he was putting his videos throughout the day. Yeah, come through the channel at about 9 o'clock Eastern time. I'm going to smoke this young buck. We're going to da-da-da, boom, boom, boom. All the videos still there, I believe, man. But um, long story short, you know, Mark just didn't know how I got down. He just didn't know the vibe. So I kind of walked in. His, and, and as humbly as I could say it, <laughs> Law was on Mark's side at first, you know what I'm saying? Because you know when when Mark was talking, you would just see Law nod, yes, yes, yes. Y'all know how Law be talking. But as I was making my points, you could just you could just feel Law going, yeah, well, shit, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, cool, all right, cool. And there was one point in the debate where I really got Mark real bad. Uh, Mark was talking about that one play and he said something wrong. Well, Mark, I was prepared for this, so I, I, I put the play on the screen. I say, I say, Mark, can you see this? I say, Law, can you see this? You just saw Law go, huh? <laughs> what, 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 was, what, what was that? And uh, I showed the play. I broke it down and talked about how wrong Witten was, how Beasley was at the wrong depth. And if we had just done this, this play would have went off without a hitch. This play had nothing to do with coaching. It was purely play execution. And boy, the chat block, the, the, the chat box just blew up and exploded. And Law Nation was just, damn, that makes sense. Da, 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 boom, boom. But how I knew Mark Holmes was a great sport and he was in great spirits about it. He wanted me to come back on the show to talk a little more with him. You know what I mean? Mark recognized uh, what I brought to the table and you know, and, and he was more accepting of me because he knows that, you know, he knows how I get down now. And I never would have been in that situation if it wasn't for Law Nation. What I did was I, I was live, Law was live, Mark was live. And what happened is I went on this stage. At the time, this was small. Like, we all bigger now, but we was, I was small at the time. And what this did for me was I... um. It was my it was my viewers, Mark's viewers and Law's viewers. And what happened was I was able to make my points and make them poignantly. And I kind of got some 
some people from Law's group to come watch me, and I got some people from Mark's group to come watch me. You know what I mean? So I think that's a big that was a big reason in, in, in me creating my my base in this cowboy community because people had never heard of me, but now I had a bunch of cowboy fans watching me, and they knew how they they knew how I um, how I got down. So major respect to 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 Mark Holmes for letting me come on his show, and you know you know, make some new friends. And all that wouldn't have happened if Law Nation didn't have enough faith in me to put me in that room uh, to to kind of to kind of wrestle with the Bears, so to speak. So shout out to Law Nation, man. He's uh, he's, um, you know, one of my roundtable brothers, man. He's a very balanced act over there, man. He does a little bit of everything in terms of interviews. He does news. He does reactions. He does nuanced information. He does film sessions. Law does everything. So um, please check his channel out. And if you heard of me, I'm sure you've heard of Law. So go watch him if you haven't. Shango is absolutely an OG in this thing, man. Shango, I think Shango was like the, the, the first cowboy YouTuber ever, I believe. Um, I could be wrong on that. But the, but he he's so original with his. Like, he's so first cowboy YouTuber. The name of his YouTube channel is The Dallas Cowboy Show. Right? Like, it's, 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 it's that first. You know what I'm saying? So um, Shango, like I said, man, him just, him, him kind of paving the way i would say for for um for cowboy youtubers and to just pick his camera up and just kind of do his thing like he's super big reaction guy his cd lamb reaction was was fantastic like like mine was great his was great now he don't post as much as us you know what i'm saying he don't he don't he don't he don't post every day but you know if you the og and you retired you ain't gotta post every day because whenever you post they're gonna they're gonna come they, they gonna come watch you anyway so uh definitely shouts out to shango man okoye media i think we all kind of kind of uh notice him at the same time i think everybody had a had a big collective who the hell is this guy right because his very first video he's done something none of us has ever done his very first video got like two hundred and fifty thousand views on it right and this and we we just wasn't seeing nothing like that at the time you know what i'm saying and and, and shit, i still ain't got a two hundred fifty thousand view video but it was his dad's brian video um, he, he, he's basically, he was a, um, a myth buster, if you will, you know, um, to where, you know, if there's a cowboy opinion that doesn't make a lot of sense, we'll say, okay, well, uh, Dez was holding Dak back. Well, LaCoye made a long ass film session basically showing that, well, uh, uh, it was, it was Dak's fault a lot with, with, you know, with Dez's decline or whatever. So, you know, I, I was looking at him as a myth buster and as an information guy. You know, um, then he's really good at hype videos, right? Like he has some fantastic hype videos in, in the in the in the middle of the season. It'll be us versus the Eagles or some. He'll pull some 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 clips from YouTube. He'll pull clips from the game, and he'll just make this fantastic this fantastic hype tape that really gets me hyped for real, for real. I'm not even playing. I'm just gonna watch the game on TV. So he's really great at that. But what he's the best at though. He's a movie buff. What he's the best at is he's really, really great at making these pieces, these motion pictures. And he's good at imagery. He's good at um, symbolism. He'll take some cowboy topic and he'll, re he'll, he'll relay it to some clip in a movie and he'll tie it all together and make it all make sense. And he'll throw some film on top of it and make it real. He's a very nuanced film guy, and I believe in what he does. So like I said earlier, I started this thing off as draft guy, right? So when I say I study draft, like I'd be like 300 or so players in studying draft. Now, <clears throat> everybody studies draft, so don't get me mistaken there. Um, but you know, some people may only be comfortable talking about the top 10. Some people only want to talk about the first round. Some people only want to talk Cowboys draft or whatever. What I like about Foots the King, what's so great about him, like I said, he has great cowboy takes, uh, great cowboy's opinion. Go absolutely check him out for that. He's good with top five lists and stuff like that. What's so good about Foots the King is I can drag him in deep draft water, fifth, sixth round draft water, and I know Foots the King can swim. I really like that about Foots the King. You know, um, sometimes when I when I talk to other people about draft, I would have to hold back a little bit. You know, I would have to bring it back a little bit. I ain't got to hold back nothing with Foots. Um, great nuanced draft opinion. Of course, people follow me. I mean, y'all on my channel right now, so I know y'all watch me. Cool. But um, if you into draft, especially Cowboy, it, all draft, really. Not just Cowboy draft, but he does it from a Cowboy's perspective or whatever. But 
definitely watch Fuss's draft content, man. He's good all year round, but he really put the satin on the panties with his uh, with his uh, draft talk, and I trust him. I trust him more than anybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, Cowboys blog Joe Rod also also does uh, does um, does some some pretty good draft draft coverage as well. Like I said, he knows about visits and combine stuff and all that. So uh, we 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 have a draft subset in this Cowboy community, Law Nation as well, um, and Big Game James, like the Ohio State player. So you can absolutely check him out, uh, check his draft stuff out as well when when he does it. And last but not least, and I would say that this Cowboy YouTuber is the most impressive out of all of them. Um, Vice Lombardi, bro. What the hell wrong with you, dog? <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm 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 BSing right there. I'm humbly making this blog. Um, but even though y'all are watching my show, so I'm because y'all watching this on my channel, this is my video, so I'm sure you you know who I am. Um, uh, but this video may get shared around and some people from some other uh from some other shows, you know, they may post this and they may watch it. So um so that's just that. But I, what I do here is I like to break down film. Uh, I break it down with, uh, with logic and I like to bring all aspects to the table when I'm breaking down film and making my analysis. Um, off rip, I am a former player, former coach, and I like to look at things film wise because film don't lie. But I'm also aware that sometimes stats can give you an answer that you're, that you're looking for. And as film guy, I hate stats, but as objective information guy, if a stat is telling a story, then I can't ignore it. So I think that's um, that's another thing that I bring to the table on um, on uh, my channel. We all do post game shows, like when you know when we're in the season, we play a game. We all do post game shows, but I just got a humble brag, man. I think I do it the best, man. I think I got the best post game show in in the league, man. That's just how I feel, and I think as you know, we're all supposed to feel that way about our content. You know, we're all supposed to feel that way. So don't don't take it no no don't take it any kind of way of me saying that. You know, it's just that I just feel how I feel. You know, I'm still growing. I'm not where I wanna be. I'm I'm definitely not where I wanna be. And I got a lot of work to do and I acknowledge I got a lot of work to do. But <clears throat> with that being said, I'm ready to take on anybody that doesn't believe in this thing. And this thing of ours, you know what I'm saying? We may have limitations because we don't have the budget that everybody else has. They may spend ten thousand dollars on their camera. I get mine from Amazon. You know what I'm saying? We may not have every advantage that they have, but what we have is a real life pulse in the community for the people. We have a pulse. We have information, right? Just just because you wear a suit to work, don't mean that you're more informed than me. You know what I mean? Because I'll talk this draft shit with anybody. You know what I'm saying? This 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 cowboy opinion thing. I'll, I'll talk this with anybody. Just because your paycheck reflected don't mean that you better than us. You know what I'm saying? I stand by this community and what we do. This thing of ours. You know what I'm saying? We on the way. We coming. Trust and believe it. It's a matter of time before this is the go to. Streaming is taking over right now and we got one foot in that door already. So when everybody transition over to the door, we have an established foot in it. I don't want us to leave this platform just to go somewhere for some little bit of money, for some little bitty ass paycheck. Their resource is money. I'm talking to all y'all right now. Their resource may be the money, but our resource is the content. Our content can make us money. What they're trying to do is use their money to get content. And we got to believe in what we do. We got to believe in our platform. We got to believe in what we bring to the table and not just jump to little, to just any little bitty ass dollar amount. We got to have faith in what we do. And I know we do. We just got to remain steadfast in that. You know what I'm saying? We just got to continue to think highly of ourselves. Hey, Vach, why don't you come on this network? We'll give you uh, $500 a month to come do our show. Know your worth. Know your worth and understand what you bring to the table. And don't just chase any bag. Get your money. I ain't stopping nobody from getting their money. But don't compromise what you do on this thing. Don't compromise your audience. Don't compromise your integrity. Get your money and, 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 and don't make it in a sleazy way. Also, one last thing I want to say, man, before I wrap up. I know I've been doing this for a while now. Um, 
If there's anybody that has any kind of beef or dislike with Vach Lombardi, can we please have a conversation so that won't be the case? Because in real life, I don't have no kind of fuss or disagreements with, with anybody. I don't hate no damn body. You know what I'm saying? And I'll say this, fine, whatever. Um, me and Big Game James had a had a we we had a misunderstanding. And like adults, he hit my inbox and he's like, hey Vach. This is a misunderstanding that we have. And I proceeded to have this conversation with him to let him know that what he was thinking wasn't the case. Easy as that. Now me and Big Game James are in a good place. So now when I see him in, in public, it's not some weird little feel. Because we may not all work with each other on the content, but at some point we're going to be under the same roof. And we're much better as a team on the grand scheme of things. We may not be on the same video, but as a team in the grand scheme of things, we're going to need to be on the same page with this thing. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, if there's anybody that, that, because I know I may rub people the wrong way sometimes because, and, and, and that's a very human thing. That's a very human thing. I speak with a lot of confidence. I get loud. Sometimes I holler. I look dead in the camera in your eye. I do that a lot. And sometimes people can take that the wrong way. People think I'm attacking them or they may think I'm being cocky or, or like braggadocious, like grandiose. That's my personality to just believe in what I say and to say it with passion and like conviction. I don't think nobody's wrong. I don't think nobody's stupid. I just believe in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? So if there's anybody that think Vash don't like them or anybody that don't like Vash, can we please have a conversation and fix that up so that the greater YouTube community doesn't take a strain from it? We ain't got to work together. I just don't want y'all thinking I don't fuck with you. So that if I see you in public, we can at least shake hands, dap, and we can make, you know, we can make a good, you know, a good feel, a good vibe for everybody that's there. All right. Hey man, like, comment, subscribe. And what I also want y'all to do that's watching right now is I want y'all to reach out to your cowboy YouTuber, to somebody that, that you may be watching and let them know if I say something about them, because I need everybody to kind of like tune into this just so, just so they know where I'm at with this, with this community vibe. So hopefully they can have the same vibe about this community. They can have the same, this, the, uh, the same vibe about us not beefing with each other. You know what I mean? Um, and you know, hell, if they, if they, you know, if, if, if Mark Holmes sees this and he shouts out, um, Tyson West coast, they'll go watch from there. Or if my cowboy family, um, you know, respond to this and you know, they'll at some point send somebody to, you know, foots his page, whatever the, the algorithm, whatever it calls for, whatever reaction comes from this. Um, I want us all to be on the same page and, um, to continue to build this thing and continue to build the uh, credibility and keep that content high quality. You know what I mean? So with that being said, y'all hold it down for the Doski, Wilson, the Peace, Whiskey, man. This was a fun little show to do. Um, till next time, bro. Peace.